<laughs> is this a thing now that we're teasing yeah. the half pint? Probably good for the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that's good for the numbers and using the uh, some body thing. That's always uh, racking numbers. I'm just going to go and get a hoodie on. I'm a bit cold. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, that's a nice. Uh... <laughs> so, are you, is it swimming all week this yes. week? Or yeah, nice. Monday to Friday. We leave home at about ten o'clock in the morning and get home just after four in the afternoon. Oh, that's a good day. So yeah, you're Britain, you're Britain knackered, and I mean you have to start making packing everything and. If you want to make lunch and that sort of thing, start like nine <laughs> because it takes time. And then, yeah, so it's it's long days. But you don't have to travel far then. Uh, it's a 40 minute drive yeah. to that lake. But it's a really great lake. Uh, clear water. It's a spring lake. And sand. So, I mean, it's more sand than than necessary <laughs> so it's 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 a great place to have it but yeah, yeah. well given the discussion today you should bring a shovel tomorrow <laughs> apparently yeah so while their kids are swimming what is dad doing oh he's trying to find china <laughs> i mean it's really good to hear that other one other one also have the the digging itch <laughs> why is digging so fun it's some primordial thing to hunt for treasure or food or something like that well i was uh, driving home today with both of the kids and uh, we passed a house a few blocks down and they were working with an excavator just digging a big old hole next to their house and i was like should i stop and go and watch because i really wanted to and i could use the kids as excuse like oh the, the youngest one really likes excavators and then i could just there is something about a big hole in the ground just peeking over and ooh dirt <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's so much hidden yeah. just a couple of <laughs> of centimeters down really so, i'm, I'm yeah. thinking that is maybe it's what we've been taught from childhood you, 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 um, deep down, you're expecting a buried pirate treasure. Uh, this is far away from the ocean, and there's been no been no pirates there, as far as I know. But still, might be. He's, um, uh, <laughs> that's the plan. Uh, of course, uh, it's my retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> buried treasure. <laughs> buried treasure. Uh, of course, both the kids are really into. Uh, pirates uh, and jewelry of course and uh, their late grandmother has a couple of like uh, jewelry boxes which they play with whenever they're visiting their grandfather and that got me thinking because one of them said I, I want a I want a chest for my jewelry so I was like hmm I know that the hobby shop uh, close by here they sell small wooden like chest like uh boxes that you can paint so i was thinking if i buy one of those and i just char it with my uh propane burner uh, i ding it up carve something in it and then of course i just get the cheapest crappiest jewelry i can find at a, a store somewhere and some chain and some blinky stuff and i throw it in there with a lot of dirt and <laughs> of course, we are going to my mother's cabin, if the weather is nice, in a couple of weeks. And then one evening, I can just take this after the kids have gone to bed and, of course, just dig it uh, down by the the water. And, uh, of course, go back home and, and make uh, a map by hand and do like we did when we were kids. You burn the edges and you use coffee and tea on the paper to make it look oh, like, it's an, like an episode program. of the Goonies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, put that in a bottle and uh, the day after you know, we bring the kids out with my mother's boat and go fishing or something and I just drop that bottle behind me and like, uh, then we double back and like, ooh, it's a bot with a note in it and it's, it's a map <laughs> and we go for a treasure hunt and we get and we find an old chest. I mean, 
either they're gonna understand it, but I think they're too small. So, so this might be a core memory <laughs> for them. <laughs> so, you're gonna have a blast with that. <laughs> sounds like yeah, it. yeah, that's more fun for me. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like great fun. <laughs> I was thinking a, a bit further that you could. I mean, we're we're all gonna die one day. Uh, and then <laughs> here we, we go. We, yeah, and, and we, we we all have kids who are gonna inherit us. But what if you took out a big, big hunk of that change, and made an actual treasure, <laughs> and have them when they read a testament? Yeah, I am dead. Here is a treasure map, and then more or less they have have them reenact national treasure or any one of those. <laughs> so they have to go to a town and see a thing and go go somewhere to actually get get the cash. I really like that idea. There. Uh, it's a few years ago, I think there was a millionaire. He just he hid a treasure, considerable sum of money somewhere. And he just posted some leads. And of course, the, the entire world went on a, a hunt. And of course, I'm not clever enough to like figure out all those riddles and so on. But I really like the concept. And of course, uh, someone did find it after a year or something, and I've been traveling across the nation and picking up clues and being sent here and there. And that would be really cool to do. And then when you pass <laughs> away, uh, and the lawyer comes with your testament and is like, yeah, one third of his money is hidden in a cave. <laughs> and uh, brown is the bat. That's the clue. <laughs> Go. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> And if you're too dumb to figure it out in the next 15 to 20 years, we'll just tell you where it is. <laughs> no, I mean no. The... The, the smartest <laughs> kids get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make sure you keep the family peace after you leave, yeah. you're making sure that the one who finds it gets it. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple. Just have the, the, It's full of notes of this kind. They will go obsolete in five years when they change the, yeah. the, yeah. the bank yeah. notes again. So yeah, it's a, you're on a timer. Tick tock, tick tock. And then when they find it, they open it. Sorry, I used it on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I just went in the house and uh, my daughter called me evil for dumping a load of clean washing on her bed. I said, yeah, I'm so evil. I wash your clothes and then put them back in your bedroom for you. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't put them away. <laughs> would you? Would she want you going through her drawers? And... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm, uh, anyway, I'm going to spend her inheritance as soon as we get off this call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're going to pick up the lathe or, uh, or buying tools for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy a container. <laughs> I know I know someone. <laughs> Shipping is going to be pricey, but uh, I'll give you a deal. <laughs> Actually, I know somebody who's in haulage quite close to me, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, and what I see from uh, various videos online, they, they float pretty good, so I can just chuck it over the edge <laughs> at the yeah. local key and we'll see where it ends up. Yeah, you understand the tides and stuff, don't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have a book of uh, tidal currents on the North Atlantic, so yeah, we should probably estimate roughly. <laughs> have you read it? No. No, good. <laughs> it's, it's something you don't read, you just look it up when you need it, so hopefully I'll never need it. <laughs> so did you do any work on it at the weekend, or have you just, are you still in a bit of a nervous state over it all? Uh, no, I have got uh, watertight pop rivets. So that is, of course, the natural progression of things is to change out some of the pop rivets before I paint it. And I need to remove the inside shelves or whatnot. But I, the pop rivets are sitting there. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm not sure. Should I sell it? Should I do something? Should I do something now? I have a lot of other projects and yeah, it's... It's a huge box. It's it's hard to not notice it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's it, I think it would be such a shame if you sold it because you've been wanting one for so long. You've been wanting two, and now you've got one and you can't cope with it. Yes, but that's the thing as well. I've I realized. All right, now I have the one. It's fifty percent at best 
and to be honest it's probably 30 percent of my workshop need so to be fair i should need a, uh, i should have a three container configuration and yeah. You can measure as much as you want, uh, and <laughs> but once it's there, it's massive. And then I've been down in the uh, part of our lot where I was thinking I'm gonna have it, and like it's huge on its own. Getting another one there and one on top, it's I don't have the room basically. Um, yeah, and then of course. Is there other options for a workshop? Because I'm not going to lie to myself, having the workshop on the, the same floor and not compartmentalized in th three different boxes on different levels. I mean, it's a bit hard moving stuff around and you yeah, need to double yeah. up on some tools. So I'm also thinking, is there a way around that again? And uh, of course, where it sits now, um, we did the digging here uh, last autumn with new pipes and so on. And we've prepared the ground for actually putting a slab down and building a garage. So it's like, should we just go for building a garage? And then if we go for that, then I don't need the container maybe, unless the wife got this illusion that you use a garage to put our cars in because then it wouldn't be a, a room for a workshop again yeah. so there there are some details to be figured out <laughs> yeah i mean it's good to to try it out at least because i mean it, it's nothing wrong with trying something and realize that it's not what you wanted no no and of course i, I can sell it again for uh, what i gave for it or maybe even more so uh that's a good thing. Yeah. That's just a shipping you you've lost out on then. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But on the topic of testing things out, uh, we did tease uh, some bodily uh, Oh yeah. topics. Um, I've forgotten that already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's been a couple of days. Yeah, so. it's been a couple of days. We're getting good at this, huh? Splitting out the <laughs> timeline and everything. It's brilliant. <laughs> Not at all recorded the same evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... Um, well, you've already been uh, touching the subject there, KJ. We're all going to die at some point, And as a subsequent cause of that, it's old age. I mean, we're all getting older. Um, and I've realized my, my body is telling me that... Uh, certain things are not flying anymore. <laughs> so, um, of course, there, there has always been a few things. I've, I've always said I can eat anything, and I've been lying, uh, mostly to myself. <laughs> um, I don't really, uh, what you call it, uh, I don't really work well with licorice, but that's some of the best I can eat. And if I have... What is it? It is, if I have raspberries and cream on waffles, I get a tummy ache. But I can have those parts individually, but if I combine them, <laughs> I'm out for a couple of hours. And But of <laughs> course, it, it tastes brilliant. And then you have strawberries. Uh, of course, in Norway, we like strawberries with milk when they're in season. And that is also something which I like like anything else but if i have a bowl of strawberries then i instantly have to go to the toilet um so there is a instant laxative uh, or something in it i don't know um <laughs> so it's a fun game we can play in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then of course i mean if you're home and you're, you're not planned on doing anything and you're an introvert i mean there's no problem eating strawberries and just <laughs> bring your phone and tablet to the toilet and this is just a part of the game <laughs> not worth it but yeah yeah but no I, I did I think it was earlier this year I, I had a bit of a tummy ache and it's like it was worse when I ate 
and of course I, uh, after a while I went to the doctors and we did some tests for allergies and so on but no and then I thought well I love spreadsheets and uh, statistics so why don't I just go for a very simple diet and see if that helps and I can just add things or deduct or whatever and it seems like my body doesn't like milk or milk derivatives I'm, we're not sure what it is in milk if it's the milk protein or if it is the other thing that yeah. everybody's on about so i'm gonna try different kinds of milk to see if it, if it helps but i've probably had this issue my entire life but when your body is in its 20s you can throw a lot of it it's like being hung over yeah. i mean you can deal with it easily when you're 20 you just haha i'm hung over and then you go to work and <laughs> if i have two glasses of wine now i have to have a week to recover so it's the age <laughs> thing that's catching up to me and i might not be as good on milk that i thought i was but of course i really enjoy milk that's the but that's a sad thing and then when you start realizing what they put milk in that I also like, chocolate, for instance. So I had a week now where I haven't been drinking milk. I haven't eaten chocolate. And, uh, of course, uh, staring a clear of some other milk-based products. And I have realized that this actually helps, which is good. But yeah. it's also sad because they haven't had chocolate <laughs> for a week and been pissed about it. <laughs> and then... <laughs> so, of course, now I'm going to try to find is there a combination or where is the threshold? So, um, yeah. yeah it's worth, worth trying chocolate out again just to, it might not count. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's processed milk or it's in something, it shouldn't count, I think. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. There's also, there's always dark chocolate. I, mean, I realize it's not as good as milk chocolate, but it's something at least. No, yeah. it's not. I mean, uh... well, bring it home and just mix it with some uh, barista oat milk. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the the vegan chocolate isn't. Re I mean, it's it's a re kind of the same. It's it's chocolate, but it's not. Yeah. Of course, it's finding the threshold because I'm I'm a. I've always been a milk drinker. Right? I can drink a couple of glasses of milk every day. And of course, the th is it enough for me to cut down on the milk drinking? And then can I still have milk in other things? Um, so today we had pancakes, of course, with milk in them. And I tried that and that seems to work fine. So it's, a, it's so it is probably a ratio there which your body can handle. But yeah. if you chug like a liter of milk a day, it's overload on the system probably. So I need to find that that threshold and in the various combinations. So it's a, it's going to be a, a Howard's uh, milk Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> We've not had uh, real milk in this house for a couple of years now. I think <laughs> I'm the only one that drinks milk, and that's only a milkshake form because I can't milkshakes and like my favorite thing in the world <laughs> yeah. milkshakes are like the one thing with milk i don't enjoy <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah no, I, like, I like cream as well obviously yeah and obviously yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but now we've, we've just we've, been, we've had nut milks for years now yeah. all good oh well me and the, the oldest are mil milk drinkers but my wife and the youngest is not. So it's yeah. a it's a fifty fifty split of the household. <laughs> yeah. Good. yeah. You realize what you what you can't do. I mean I, I the the older I get the 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 less I can take just uh, plain wheat flour uh, stuff. Like I mean toast, for instance. I can't I can't eat that much of just plain white toast. I need some rye in my in my bread to actually stomach it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's also the thing is I mean my my wife is better that she wants she makes food from scratch and with vegetables and everything and I I can easily have uh, hot dogs four days a week because I don't I mean, I enjoy a nice meal, but 
I can work fine on just a piece of toast or whatever food just so I can have something to uh, keep the fire burning while I pop down in the workshop again. So I don't need all my meals to be good. And of course, now I'm trying to... Maybe I should start to make a bit more variations and make things from scratch. And of course, with everything being more pricey then it it makes sense to try to make it and think a couple of days ahead so that the leftovers from that day can go into the next dish and of course for that to work on someone with my attention span i have to gamify it so it's like uh, (laughs) how can i make this work with this and if this then that and it's almost so yeah we're basically back to spreadsheet again very quickly (laughs) (laughs) I'm um, I'm not much of a carb guy, so I don't I don't eat much in the way of pasta and potatoes and things like that. I do like bread, but I bake all our bread, so I, I think it's the homemade bread that I really like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I I tend to batch cook. I'm I'm the only meat eater in this house. The girls are vegetarian, um, so I generally batch cook for myself. So I'll if I feel like cooking, I'll probably cook enough for at least another night, if not four or five other nights. And they go in the freezer and then if a couple of days later I feel like cooking again, I'll do the same and then I have a variation of food in the freezer. Yeah. So if I don't feel like it, as long as I've remembered to get something out of the freezer the night before, I'm good. So, yeah. So I get proper food that way as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much a carb guy. Yeah. Pasta is, yeah, i um, I need a lot of carbs. I feel. <laughs> yeah, Michelle. Michelle would live off pasta if you let her. <laughs> That's all she would eat. She loves it. <laughs> I love pasta, but I, I think there there must be some Irish in me because potatoes is. I could have potatoes to anything basically, and uh, a few years ago, me and the wife we went to Peru, and they actually have over three thousand variations of potatoes, and it like. <laughs> All right. And I tried them all. We we need to stay here for a few years. <laughs> so it's like you could have you can have different kinds of potatoes every day of the week for ten years or something like that. So bring it on. I re- I really like potatoes as well, as long as they're not just boiled, because that's boring. You can do so much so much more with potatoes. So it feels like nice, you're wasted. The nice little um, salad new potatoes aren't too bad if it's just those, new new yeah. potatoes. Yeah, yeah. they're they're fine cooked, but. Uh, yeah. The other ones, they should be. I mean, just ma- do a mash instead, or yeah, I like so much. Yeah, mash is good. I but I I could eat boiled potatoes as well. But I learned a trick a few years ago when you make um, a special dish for Christmas. Then instead of um, you're just gonna you're just gonna steam the meat, so you put one of these uh, restrainers in the bottom of your kettle or your pot, I mean. And then you have water up to the bottom of that, and then you have the potatoes in, so they just get steamed. Someone told me that if you put potatoes down in the pot and you just barely cover them with water and then you put the meat on there, of course, the meat will get steamed. But some of those uh, broth from the meat will then go down oh, in yeah. the water to the potatoes and it, they will get infused by it. So if you take a regular boiled potato by the side and you pay, take one of these potatoes up, they're very much more uh, orangey uh, in color and they taste magnificent. They uh, have that uh, small uh, hint of whatever uh, the main course is. <laughs> so it's brilliant. So. Uh, umami infused potatoes yeah. you lost me when you said you were steaming your meat <laughs> <laughs> not interested <laughs> <laughs> yeah I heard that's a thing on, on, on the internet but yeah let's not go there <laughs> <laughs> don't google it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <coughs> that being uh, said, uh, talking about uh, hands, uh, I went to Ikea yesterday and then 
I actually found one of those hands we talked about a few episodes ago, and they have oh, actually, yeah. yeah, they have zip tied the long uh. finger <laughs> to the base, so you could put up any finger but the long one. And believe me, I tried, but no. <laughs> You didn't have uh, some snips with you to <laughs> no, <laughs> next time. To free it. Next time. <laughs> so I started telling you a couple of days ago. I uh, I was working hard on a, a project a couple of days ago. Now, if we're sticking with the timeline, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I cut a fire extinguisher in half today on the table saw. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> You should do a, a safety squint when you're doing that, I think. I did I did a double safety squint. <laughs> <laughs> Was it an uh, aluminum <laughs> fire extinguisher? No, steel. So what blade did you use? A multi-material blade cage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which says it will cut steel on it. Or, it, does, did, it, did or it. does it mean it's made out of steel? <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks now, like it worked. It did work. It worked to treat actually, and the uh, those blades are brilliant. They don't they don't hardly spark. They do spark a little bit, but barely, which is What's nice. What's the fun in that? No show. <laughs> well, I know, but you do all your grinding and stuff outside, don't you? And yeah. I do mine in the in the wood workshop, <laughs> in the workshop that's made out of wood. <laughs> that that would be my dust everywhere <laughs> and dodgy fire extinguishers. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, that would be my issue as well because my. My table saw is integrated and bolted to the table, and it is full of dust, even though I run the dust extraction when I use <laughs> yeah. it. So, yeah, a metal blade on that one is like uh, <laughs> made the world's largest lighter. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, having the dust extraction on and just sucking in some sparks, that can make an interesting boof out of the <laughs> bag. We, we tried that uh, at shop class uh, when I... At, at school uh, oh yeah that's sucked in some flames and then the entire thing went boom and we had to <laughs> evacuate the, the school <laughs> because the fire alarm went off <laughs> so yeah i just I wouldn't threw away a big bag of sawdust i should just make a sawdust cannon and then use the propane uh, torch and uh, yeah that could yeah, it's too late now. The garbage man picked it up days ago. So, yeah, I, not... I've always wanted to do make this, some uh, one of those pyro uh, special effects thing that yeah. shoots out a dust storm and ignites it. That's... I've never seen that. I don't think. I, I How s- are we making one of those? I've seen people do it where they put sawdust or flour in big drums. And then they have a like a ball valve at the bottom, just releasing a lot of air in there. And they just put a candle on top, and then you just open the valve, and it's just like, and it's the oh, largest okay. flame <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> but you that, just have to get the ratios right, and then it's awesome. Yeah. But that got me thinking. Uh, my wife had her car this week at the. Um, uh, What's it called? EU control and or periodic MOT, the bi yearly check you do on cars. <laughs> <laughs> our, our cars over three years old have to go for a yearly MOT. Yeah, all right, MOT. To make sure they're road, roadworthy. Yeah, it's yeah. the same here. And my wife just had her. And of course, uh, we saved, we did the maths on it and we, and we saved. 600 pounds by swapping the brake discs ourselves and tightening mm. the wire for the handbrake and i think i paid uh, two pounds for that little adjustment needle for the um, one of the sprayers for the windshield fluid and that got me thinking there is a project i've always wanted to do and that is of course you need an ignition source and then you just put pure alcohol on the window wiper fluid tank. And in the winter, instead of scraping ice off your window, <laughs> you just press a button and it just yeah. flame throw it off. And then, of course, 
it's a bit hard and you have to integrate it and then you have to have a coil to make a spark on a spark plug but you need one of those little piezo things don't you yeah that's the thing because i stumbled yeah. over that here the other day on uh, aliexpress you can get one of these igniters for next to nothing and of course the uh i can go to the la uh, the, the local hardware store and buy one of the nozzles and a pump for like 10 pounds so I think for 20 pounds total, I have all the parts. I think I can make it as a bolt on system so I don't have to chop my car up. I mean, it's bad enough uh, throwing flames at the windshield, but <laughs> I mean, it's winter, so how hard can it be? <laughs> but that would be so cool. Just uh, make a video, get up in the morning and start scraping and God damn it, and just sit down in your car and start it up, press a button, and like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should I mean, do it, it on the wife's car. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, but yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> but, I mean, it's really fun if you incorporate your wife. She, <laughs> she just in the windows yeah, and complaining not... to you in the in the evening, and you <laughs> say, "Honey, I fixed your car. Just press the red button." Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <arr! laughs> and then you end the video. <laughs> oh, she, she knows me too well. If I present a red button, she's staying well clear of it. <laughs> But of course, I could just hotwire it to the ignition so it turns on automatically and then just not say anything about it. <laughs> that would prove to be a good uh, anti-theft thing as well. I mean, if you steal a car and it and it kicks off a flame, you're probably not going to drive it off. <laughs> I did see a, a company in South Africa actually uh, installing that on cars. It was flamethrowers under the car on yeah, each side yeah. uh, for carjackings and so on, but it had a relatively uh, narrow market, so selling it internationally, it was some rules and regulations around that uh, flamethrowing people was frowned upon. <laughs> e even the ones trying to steal your car. But it was legal there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think so. Um, or it yeah. was not, not legal. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you say you and your wife were changing the uh, discs. I, I think you were just photographing it, weren't you? Cause... Yeah, yeah, that's the... Yeah. Um... This is the second. <laughs> this is the second time my wife has changed uh, brake discs and pads on this car, and now her uh, father wanted to learn it as well. So I was just uh, hanging around chopping wood, and then uh, just pointed at some bolts, and you do this and you do that, and they did all the work nice. themselves. That's that's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Well, cool. It's a it's an easy job, but it's it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not a fun job. So if I can just point and say do that and someone else do it and we save yeah. a lot of money that's that's good to me <laughs> it's, some cars are easier than others i had one i changed the disc on it was brilliant you took the wheels off and the wheels held the disc on yeah nothing else to undo <laughs> that was dead easy <laughs> <laughs> nice that was the thing with um i've changed on mine and then i was going to change the rear discs and of course it has an electronic handbrake and of course on the american version you can go into the menu system and you can say that you're doing a brake change and it just releases the handbrake but this is not an option on the european model so you actually have to have a computer like a workshop computer and hook it up and say you're doing a service uh. So I ordered the parts, of course, jacked the car up, got the wheels off, and I did not get to remove the discs because the handbrake was on. And then, of yeah. course, you can disconnect the electronic motor, the, the actuator that actually clamps on to the parking brake thingamabob, uh, and then just reverse the current on those, but when I looked at the the cable it's on with a socket and if you take it off will I get it on again or will I break it uh, break the seal so you get water in there and problems later and it's also a computer on wheels so if you do something uh, to the electronics it's it's very happily uh, going into a limp mode and say oh no someone is touched with a sensor i don't want to run before you have had it to a workshop so like god damn it so i just put the wheels back on again and i i drove to the workshop and say can you swap it out for me i don't want to do this hassle in my i don't even have a proper workshop for working on cars i'm just doing it out in my driveway <laughs> and of course being a 
a car mechanic, they don't want to change parts that you have bought because what they make their money on is uh, yeah. just as much uh, the markup on the parts that they buy. Now they say it's because of insurance, we can't use any other parts, but it comes from the same factory. So, <laughs> so I had to ship them back and of course uh, I got my refund, but uh, of course I lost the shipping costs. But it's annoying. I mean, this is the kind of job you can do on your own car. So why do they have to complicate it? Because they're bastards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, we I'm smarter than them because the warranty on my car is now expired. So now I can do a lot of shit myself, like uh, a flamethrower <laughs> windshield wiper system. And uh, yeah, I'm even going to change my own oil this year. So that's going to be interesting. It was quite recently that I learned that they don't have uh, yearly MOTs in the uh, USA. That's... No, I mean, that starts, no, no, that's... explains a lot. Yeah, and I would feel so scared going down the road over there when everyone just expected to, to take care of their car and the only time they check it if a policeman is doing it. A, uh, a flying inspection. Yeah, Jesus. Um, I can barely remember. We started. I mean, in in Norway, it's if you buy a new car, you don't have to do an MOT for the first four years, but after that, you have to have it every other year. And uh, I remember when they actually made this mandatory, and people were outraged because oh no we need someone to check our cars every once in a while and then of course within the course of two to four years a lot of old cars just disappeared because someone says this is a death trap and you have to pay <laughs> tens yeah. of thousands to get them to basically be safe again so people just scrap them and today of course the, the prices are surging and people don't like it never fits your time schedule when you have to put your car in and they always find something when you have an old car and it costs to fix it. So it's like you always end up with paying money, but you have a safer car park today than you had 25 years ago. So yeah. it is yeah. not all that bad. No, definitely not. I think it's worth keeping. Yeah. I mean, it's probably fine for for the car people who actually know knows and can fix stuff with their car, but... The rest of us who don't care about cars and don't know how to fix stuff. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's a red light. I wonder what that is. <laughs> Put the tape over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's ask someone yeah. who actually knows. Uh, that's that's uh, a, that's. Well, a you good. drive a Peugeot, K KJ. If you've got a red light on there, there are reset settings on Peugeots, which if, as long as you've mastered those, you can just turn <laughs> them off. <laughs> it won't it won't pop on again for another three to four weeks <laughs> i actually that's a that's a good investment i bought I, I bought this bluetooth odb plug that you can plug into your car to read the, all the fault codes because i i have an engine warning light popping up every now and then and just plug it up and then like all right it's an it's an exos and i have exhaust uh sensor or something and of course just reading up on it is like all right it might get a bit worse fuel to air mixture but it has several sensors which is used to control towards each other so if one of them fails it still runs perfectly fine so like yep not spending money on that so i have our <laughs> red light and my wife always when she borrows the car is so much lights in your car i don't worry about it and of course the uh I swapped the tires out last year, and uh, now the the sensors for the tire pressure doesn't work. Uh, and then, of course, I checked the price on them, and I don't need them. I, I, I it's like before I notice if my one of my tires are running flat because I I have the habit of walking around the car every once in a while. There's there's something hanging off for so as you should as you should yeah. um so yeah i have some those lamps are blinking of course because that's not working and then that's the sensor but everything else is working so uh, but just knowing what it is uh, knows that i don't have to run to the workshop every time a lamp comes on and i can just 
when I'm going for my next MOT next year, I can just schedule in. Can you just swap that sensor as well if you need some specialist tools or if yeah. it's hardly uh, accessible, then I can do it at the same time. Save me some money. We had the same issue on our, our old Peugeot before we got rid of it. That the um, all the tire pressure sensors had gone, and they put that they made they're all uh, based on the valves. Yeah. And what Peugeot had done is they literally just put two um, used the wrong sorts of metals basically, so they corroded each other <laughs> on the actual valves. So of course they, did. they were they were they were destined to fail right from <laughs> right from being put on. <laughs> Brilliant. Something like eighty quid a piece to replace, and like you say, you don't need them. You just you just check your tires if it looks a bit flat on the bottom. You top it up, don't you? <laughs> yeah, and that's the same thing. I mean, if I, I could buy them myself uh, at a decent price, but still they were a bit pricey, and then I had to go to a store because I don't have the tools to get the tires off and reseat them no. after you put that in. So you, then I have to pay for that as well. So. I mean, I now I know that, of course, I if next time I'm getting new tires, then I can get them and just have them to put them on while they are swapping the tires around. But that is several years ahead because I just got new tires. And are you sure that the OBD sensor works? By the way, I bought one a few years ago, and it was a piece of crap. To be honest with you. Will tell you that there was a fault somewhere, but it was always the wrong fault. It was never that that was wrong with it. I don't know, of course, because they haven't tested it uh, against the workshop. Uh, but it's the same fault, and I, I get to reset yeah. it. And then, of course, oh, it's okay. um, and uh, yeah, my uh, my brother-in-law also have. Um, he have this professional uh, like uh, mechanics uh, computer to hook up, so I'm going to use that. But he is, uh, of course, all his friends are borrowing it for projects and so on. Yeah. So uh, it's not every time I'm visiting that it's uh, on the premises. So yeah. one day I'll match up so I can uh, hook it up to my car and get a proper reading. Yeah, that's the thing that made me um, really question it was, you know, when you've find out how much those proper mechanics computers cost yeah you know several thousand pounds and you can get yeah. one of these bluetooth centers sensors for less than 20 quid <laughs> yeah and that's the thing though they just read the codes and they just get yeah. the standard signals out so you can get uh, some feedback but you need a proper one to access all the settings where you can actually do things and what i would want to do is like find a fault and I don't care about that one and then you just click on fuck off and it just never men <laughs> mentions it again so uh, yeah I'm not sure that's a that's a feature but I, I wish it were so, um... it's a little bit if you don't get the uh, warning light on and you don't know there's a problem there's not a problem isn't it it's like going to the doctors exactly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been healthy for the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to a doctor once. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh. And you don't hear any weird sounds or creaks or anything like that when moving around? I just ignore those. There's no lights coming on, KJ. <laughs> and that's the thing. Of course, it's, it's slowly deteriorating, so you don't notice it. But, of course, if yeah. you... If you borrow the neighbor's car, which is brand new, and you drive around and it's like, oh, it's so quiet in here. And then you get back to your own car and it's like uh, driving a horse and carriage from the 1870s. <laughs> like, all right, maybe the shocks are not as they once were. And maybe there are some bushings I need to replace. And uh, <laughs> but what the hell? It's working. And it's last time I had it on an MOT, they said, well, you have a small oil leak between. I think it's a transfer case between the the front wheel drive and the rear wheel drive system and like it's it's just sweating oil so it's not dripping so you notice it it's like yep not doing anything about that i mean i i googled and no you can't top it up but as long as it's not making puddles under my car i'm not spending 10 no i mean 1000 <clears throat> 2000 pounds for them to 
take that out and reseal it and rebuild it. And for that amount of money, I can change a lot of oil on that old car. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe we could get some. I see on these old um, steam-powered engines, they have these like these oil cups. They just put on all the bearings that just drips oil every now and then, and just fill those up. So I'm just gonna get <laughs> one of those in the back of my car, and then just pull out some uh, copper wires to the various moving parts of the car, and just have some <laughs> slow dripping oil on it every once in a while. I mean, it worked for hundreds of years, so. Have you seen those? You get wheel washers for lorries, so it's basically you drive your lorry through a big puddle, basically, and it washes the wheels. Maybe you could just get a smaller version, fill it with oil, and just drive your car through it really fast. <laughs> That's probably safe. Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> That's that's maybe the worst thing. Um, I was driving home here the other day, and it smells a bit burning. But of course, it, it might be a rock or something that's lodged between one of the brake pads or something. So I just took around around the car. No, all the brakes are normally temperatured, and uh, and I opened the hood. And, yep, it's smoke down here, and then. There is a bit of an oil leak uh, right next to the heat shield for the turbo, which is the hottest part of the engine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's not like dripping oil and it's not sp like putting out a, a stream of oil when it's running. So it's probably just sweating oil and then I probably just drove in a puddle <laughs> and some water got in or something because it was raining and then so... Uh, yeah, I've been driving with that now for weeks. Uh, it's probably a sign of a really healthy turbo. I wouldn't worry about it. No, no, no. So, and I, I just, <laughs> I just parked the car ten meters away from the house, so in case it just goes up in flames, it doesn't burn the house down. So, <laughs> I mean, it's all good. Good thinking. I had a, an uncle long dead now, but he used to buy a, a new bike every sort of four or five years, a new motorbike. And uh, as soon as he got it home, it would smear the whole thing in grease. So this thing looked like a pile of shit <laughs> for the next four or five years. And then when he came to get rid of it, he'd take it to the jet wash, hose <laughs> it all down, and this thing looked brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from all the, obviously, the hot areas where it smeared the grease. That wasn't too tasty. But... <laughs> oh. was a funny quirk. <laughs> I, I don't... An old colleague of mine, he bought a new car, and the first thing it did, it was it bought some thing to cover the seats with. And uh, I'm not sure if it was the same guy who actually had some foil on his car as well to protect the paint. And then it's like, <laughs> why do you even buy a new car? Yeah. When you bring it home, and you're just preserving everything. You're covering up the seat with these crappy patented uh, covers because you're going to sell it again later. So you are not going to enjoy this car because you're covering it up for the next guy who's going to make a deal and buying this used but as good as new. And then it's a waste of money. I mean, a car is yeah. a waste of money no matter what you but I yeah. mean then you can just buy an old car because you're going to put seat covers on it anyway and wrap it in some dull colored saran wrap or whatever they're using to <laughs> cover the cars so yeah i never get that i mean of course i have i have seat covers in the van but that's a that's a necessity <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. You're, it's for a reason yeah yeah <laughs> i mean you're <laughs> Your uh, trousers are have big holes in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So I forgot oh, about last, that. <laughs> I did as well. That was last Friday. So I went to a job, and uh, I just felt I felt a little tear in the back end, and I thought, oh, that's not too bad. You know, we're, we're talking about fifty mil at this point. Then you know, it was the day I was wearing pants, so it's all good. <laughs> and uh, I nipped home, and I thought oh, I'll just get I'll just get changed when I nip home, and before I go back out to work again. 
and I just completely forgot. Anyway, I went to fill up with fuel, and I'm filling up with fuel. Luckily, it was a pay at pump, and uh, realised the split had got considerably bigger, and I'm much closer to the next job than I am home at this stage. <laughs> So I thought, oh, I'd be fine. The customer never really comes out chatting to me. And luckily it didn't. But by the end of the day, there was <laughs> there was a rip. It was probably about 200 mil right <laughs> back. <laughs> I mean, if I got caught short, I wouldn't have needed to take those shorts off. <laughs> <laughs> so now do you, do you keep an extra pair of, of trousers in the van? <laughs> no, I... I always have a pair of waterproofs in the van, a waterproof bottoms, um, oh. you know, obviously in case it rains, so I can always use those in case of emergency, and I have done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the topic of garments, I did not know that this existed uh, in this form, but I mean, every time I've been to Scotland, it's like, should I get a kilt? Because it, it seems comfortable enough in the summertime, and I never done it. But now I realize you can actually get, like, instead of work trousers, you can get work kilts with all the pockets yeah. for tools and everything. And like, do I want that in Utility my kilts. workshop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm still on the fence, but uh, I just I... I just stumbled over them when I was looking into the uh, the chef's uh, clothing because the the store sold them. So. Should I buy one? Would look good on you. <laughs> Some, is this something you're genuinely interested in or just curious at this stage? No, I'm just, just curious. curious, yeah. Just curious, I, yeah. But yeah. I mean, in, in big kilts question. in general, because I mean, it sounds nice and breezy, doesn't it? And yeah, do you think it, do you think you start with kilts and then maybe work onto a skirt and then a full dress? And yeah, I know it's a slippery slope, but I've already, I've already <laughs> done a full like evening gown. So <laughs> I mean, this is a step down. <laughs> I mean, kilts are great. I, I used to wear that when I went to music festivals. Uh, the, the question here is, uh, will you wear it uh, the proper way? Did it look like a mini <laughs> Did it look like a mini skirt on you, KJ? <laughs> what? I, I I made it myself, <laughs> so I made sure it was the proper length. Uh, okay, <laughs> but uh, that did not. Uh, I mean, at least once uh, every time someone had to check if I were wearing <laughs> underpants or not. And were you? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the joke was on them. <laughs> mostly, mostly. <laughs> They were more, more ready to to uh, to blame me for not doing it properly, and then they just yeah, got a surprise. <laughs> I, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> Probably best best that they, we ended that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a, that's a nice, it's lovely image for everybody now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be an image we put on Instagram. I think. <laughs> I hope you're not listening to this before going to bed. Uh, or <laughs> <laughs> sweet dreams, sweet dreams. <laughs> All <right>. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, giving the new meaning to the term knobheads. All right. <laughs> Good night.